Now, I will give you a very simplified and very brief uh, discussion of the EEG. The EEG sample that we have on this screen, I obtained it using the Brain Master um, device. It is a 19 channel device. Um, and the software that we used is from NeuroGuide. The name of that company is Applied Neuroscience. You might want to Google both of these companies in order to, to get more information about EEG and how we measure it and what kind of devices are used. Now, in terms of our discussion about tension and relaxation, um, the important thing to note on the EEG, by the way, this is the same EEG that ne the neurologists use. They use exactly the same one and they analyze it to see if there's epilepsy or some other neurological condition. The psychologists will use the same kind of EEG, uh, but they, they subject it to statistical analysis, which will make it easier for us to actually be able to detect uh, psychological uh, uh, issues. Now, each line on the, on the screen here represents a position on the head. For example, the top line, according to how we arranged this EEG, we call it a montage. According to how we did the montage here, this line corresponds to the forehead, the foremost part of the forehead, and it's called FP1. And then this line corresponds to the opposite side on the forehead as well, called FP2. And all these uh, positions on the head are represented by these lines, but I won't go into detail about those, except to mention maybe one or two more. Uh, right at the center of the head, there is a position which has, was used quite a lot in the early days of uh, doing treatment using these devices. It's called the CZ. It's in the, at the center of the head. Um, in America, they call it CZ. So this is what the, the head looks like with all those electrodes placed on top of the head and producing these uh, wiggly lines, which represents electrical activity of the brain, which we can split for each of these lines, we can split the electrical activity into categories, uh, which we call frequency bands. It's just for convenience. So we're looking at um, a range of electrical activity from one to 30 cycles per second, but we classify it into different groupings like delta. We are only looking at inside this wave, at those waves that cycle between one and three cycles per second. And then this head represents all those brain waves at each of these positions which cycle between four and eight times per second. We call it hertz per second. This head <clears throat> represents um, the waves which cycle between eight and 12 cycles per second. This one represents 12 to 25, and this one represents 25 to 30. We don't have the uh, heads for, for speeds beyond 30, but they are certainly measurable and useful uh, usable and relevant to analysis of psychological processes. But it's much easier uh, in terms of the technology to use up to 30. All right, now let me just explain what these heads, how we analyze them. For each head, we try to determine the electrical activity, how much does it deviate from normal? If we say zero is normal, then close to zero or round about zero, one standard deviation from zero above and below is normal and is represented by just plain white color on the head. But as we move to this side, the colors are becoming brighter. We are moving beyond one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations from zero. So we've got an excess of activity here. There's excess EEG power. The other side represents the opposite event. In other words, we're getting less and less 
EEG power or electrical activity from zero, you know, going beyond three standard deviations. But already at two standard deviations, we're beginning to, to, to say this is outside the norm. So this is what I've described is just for the delta wave or the delta group of waves. But the same principle applies to theta, to alpha, to beta, and to high beta. So all these represent the categories or the frequency bands in the head. So these are slow. These are the slowest. And these are the fastest. And then these ones are in between. Um, if we take this as our reference, which is alpha, 8 to 12, then we can say we have slow waves beginning at alpha, going back to theta and delta. So those waves are in the slower range, but this is kind of our reference. And then as we go beyond alpha, these are fast waves. The fastest waves, actually, and the high beta would be the fastest. Now I'm just going to make the animation run of the EEG surf as we were seeing it when we were recording it so that you can see the changes in color on all the heads between delta, theta, alpha, beta, and high beta. And all those changes in color are indicating changes in electrical activity or deviation from zero indicating either that there's too much electricity or too much um, electrical power or electrical energy or too little. Let's just do it so that you can see what I mean. Right, you can see that in Delta, by and large, we've got a clean white surface there. So it means these, these scores are within normal limits, but they're a little a few bands of uh, a little bit uh, less power. And at this point in time, we can see that there is sort of average higher than normal power. And at alpha also, we can see some changes happening there. And here, as I'm pointing, those parts of the head that are white indicate that there's a little difference from zero. In other words, it's normal. So, in terms of tension and relaxation, if we use alpha as our reference point, if a person has got more and more and more of these, the beta range, that is beta, beta and a high beta, there is more tension there. There might actually be even more anxiety, especially towards high beta, more rumination, um, over-aroused, an overhouse brain, which is associated with a lot of tense feelings and anxiety. If we move from alpha going towards delta, going back to the, the, the slowest waves, then we are getting more restfulness in some sense, but slowness of brain waves. And of course, if we go into delta, and if someone stays in delta or less than you know less than three, then this is the direction of coma, and this is the direction of overexcitation. And tension and relaxation, uh, the way that we've been describing it, to some extent reflects how the brain waves are running in a particular individual. Are the brain waves going towards slowness? which might be associated with, uh, well, with relaxation in some instances. Uh, but if it is too much, it might actually be associated more with depression. And over this end, the waves are more associated with being aroused, highly focused in attention, uh, but tense as well. Now, the tension and the relaxation or other psychological issues are actually not only determined by the fact that you produce a lot of electrical power, electrical energy uh, in any of these waves, but we are also looking at 
one part of the head, this and that. How do they communicate? What is the speed of communication between them? To what extent do different parts of the head share activity? In other words, to what extent do they change at the same level? In other words, they, they go up together, they go down. What kind of correlation is there between, for example, the occipital left and the frontal left? So those are called connectivity issues. So we're looking at how connected the brain areas are. If there's too much uh, connection, and then it shows that the brain is not working in a very differentiated fashion. It might actually affect intellectual function. If there's too little, the same applies. If um, the connection between brain areas is faster than normal, then it might mean that there's um, impulsivity or uh, a lot of uh, feelings of anxiety and, and so on. If there's too little, the speed is too slow, that means the person is processing information very slowly. So just in brief, we can actually measure the activities that happen in the brain. And I haven't shown you all the activities, you know, all the things that we can do with this data in order to be able to determine the extent to which a person is tense or relaxed. But uh, this should suffice for now. Thank you.